Hey YouTube, it's Faye, and for today's video, I'm going to walk you through the process of how I degreed the camshafts on my 7M build with my Fidanza adjustable cam gears. This is a video that I recorded a while ago and completely forgot about as I moved on to other parts of my build, but I feel like this is an important topic to cover because I see so many people who choose to install these beautiful gears, but have no idea what to do with them, aside from of course showing them off and putting a nice clear timing cover over them. So here we go. First, I want to note that I'm installing the bolts that I modified to clear the back of the gears. I actually did this in another video, I'll link it up above. I shaved those heads down until they were just a few millimeters thick. I tightened them by hand first, then with hand tools, but use very, very little pressure. I'm actually not sure exactly what the torque spec is, but I guarantee you it's next to nothing. To install my cam gears, I'm using brand new OE Toyota cam pins on my BC Stage 2 camshafts. I highly recommend that you test fit your gears first before you install them because I had to shorten the bolts on the gears themselves, otherwise they'll hit the backing plate. I have a video on that as well, so click the link above right now if you don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm using high strength thread locker on the cam bolts. And if you wonder why, I have a little PTSD from my cam gears repeatedly coming loose. This is a throwback to the very beginning of my engine build journey, so check out that first video in my Super Saga playlist if this subject interests you. Basically though, a reputable machine shop in the Portland area did shoddy work for me, never checked my cylinder head for straightness, and machined my cylinder head crooked which caused the cams to bind in the cylinder head when my engine reached operating temperature, causing my cam gears to fall off on my brake and drive. I'm using the red thread locker rather than the ARP assembly lubricant, and I'm using the factory torque specifications for the bolts, which is 36 foot-pounds with my snap-on digital torque wrench and a 12 millimeter socket, holding the camshaft still while I torque with a wrench. This tape is just so I don't mar the surface of the camshafts that no one will ever see and wouldn't even matter anyway. I just can't help myself. <laughs> Next, I'm installing my oil pump drive pulley, and you can see that I have this fancy one from Punch Out Performance, which I will link in the description. I'm also using high strength thread locker on this bolt as well, Hylomar brand, and torquing the factory specification. I'm putting a rag carefully around the gear to protect the teeth and holding it with an oil filter wrench while I torque it, since the torque spec is pretty low at only 16 foot pounds. This is a new OE spring tensioner for the timing belt. I'm just temporarily installing it so I don't lose it right now. And now to install our timing belt. I'm using this Gates Racing Kevlar belt because through my cam gears shearing off three freaking times, my old belt never broke. So I honestly didn't even have to replace it, but I just wanted to anyway because it's a brand new build. This thing has absolutely withstood extreme tension tests, so I'll link this below as well. I'm never using anything other than this. All right, now I'm installing the lower timing cover so that I can see my timing marks, and I'm just installing a couple of bolts to hold it flush, and then I'm gonna install my crank pulley or harmonic balancer, and I chose this super damper for this build. Now heading to the top of the engine, I'm installing this cool little plate that I made to hold my magnetic base dial indicator. This bolts down to the cylinder head and has a hole in the middle to access the piston top of cylinder number one. Now since I'm going to be degreeing both cams, I will need two more dial indicators as well. So I made this little bridge out of aluminum and machined some pieces to hold my dial indicators perfectly in line with the tiny space that I have available at the top of the lifters. This is by far the most time consuming and difficult part of the process and I will spare you the hours of my life that I spent making the plunger adapters and setting these up. Just know that if it takes you eons, you are not alone. <laughs> Once I have them both in place, I'm tightening the dial indicators down onto the adapter plates that I made and I'm installing my center dial indicator to make sure my TDC is super accurate. As you probably know, true top dead center can be a little bit ambiguous due to the piston dwell at the top of the stroke, so I'll be finding and verifying true TDC prior to making my cam adjustments. I actually have a whole video on finding and verifying TDC on my harmonic balancer. I will link that above right now. Once I'm satisfied, I will install my timing belt starting on the driver's side or the side on which I will be setting the tension manually. Now the other side is the tensioner and I'll be able to adjust the tightness of the belt with that spring and adjustment pulley. Now I do this by feel, although belt tension gauges are available if you're not sure. I've just done so many of these, I know what they should feel like, not crazy tight, not too loose. If you install the belt too tight, you're gonna get an annoying whining sound. And if you install it too loose, you'll hear a slapping noise from behind the timing cover. I install the spring temporarily while I turn the engine over and then set the final torque on the tensioner. While I'm turning the engine over, I'm also double checking the alignment and location of the camshaft dial indicator plungers, making sure that they're not slipping, popping out of place, or catching on the sides of the camshaft lobes. There we go, turn the engine over a few times, TDC is all lined up, and so are the match marks on my cam gears. So now we're good to go and move on to the next step. Here's the cam card that came with my camshafts. 
They want the center line to be at 110 degrees on the intake cam and 118 degrees on the exhaust cam. Now, according to them, this is where their camshafts perform the most efficiently, so let's make it happen. The first step is finding and verifying my current center line. I'm doing this in the exact same way that I did with finding TDC. So if you'd like a super in-depth tutorial on that, just click the link above, follow my deep dive on that topic. But the cliff notes is that basically I choose an arbitrary amount of degrees that I will count both advanced and retarded of the center line to identify true center. So this is just finding something that's convenient on the dial indicator basically, and then I mark it both forward and back on the harmonic balancer. That way, just like TDC, I'm identifying the true center independent of any dwell, mark that on my crank and check it twice, maybe three times, and because it's me, probably four. And you can see the jig that I made here for my dial indicator plunger. This is so tricky on the 7M. Man, I wish I had any specific tips or tricks for you, but unfortunately the only answer is just patience. I did shave off the top of this welding rod to keep it from hitting the bottom of the camshaft. And I'd be lying if I told you that this only took me a couple hours to do. This was very, very time consuming. Which is yet another reason why building the 7M is not for the faint of heart. It absolutely tests your patience at every step. All I can tell you is that try to place it exactly where I have it here in this video. There really is not anywhere else that will work. Trust me, I've tried everything possible. Here you can see the very accurate sticker markings that I've made on my harmonic balancer. Now this part can be a little confusing, so if you have any questions or want me to clarify anything, please let me know in the comments below. I will make a follow-up video. But basically, the first thing that I'm going to do is find the center line, the exact true center line where I'm at currently with both intake and exhaust cam. No, I'm not just going to look up the specs. I'm not just going to assume that it's OE. I just built the cylinder head. It is not fresh out the factory. There could be some human error, so I'm just going to go ahead and verify it. Much like verifying TDC, there's that point of dwell when the cam load is pushing down on that lifter where the dial indicator will pause for a while. Now because of this we can't identify the exact true center so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose an arbitrary marking on my dial indicator that is convenient and easy for me to mark both forward and back. So here on the intake side I chose 30 and by 30 I mean 30 thousandths on the dial indicator and I'm translating that number into degrees of movement on the crank pulley. 30 thousandths forward, mark it. 30 thousandths backward, mark it. Add the two numbers together, divide by two, and bam, exact center. You could choose any number based on how you have your dial indicator set up. This is just the number that I'm choosing to do the exact same point, both forward and backward, so I can mark those numbers, figure out exactly what degree that is on my harmonic balancer, add the two together, divide them, find the exact center line. I could have chose 50, I could have chose 70, whatever. I just chose 30 because it was convenient. I chose 70 as the arbitrary number on my exhaust cam. All you wanna do is just make sure you're hitting that exact same number, both forward and reverse, adding the two together, dividing. This will get you the true center line that you have currently on both cams at this moment. So you'll know how much adjusting you'll need to do to match the specs on the cam card. So after all that, I got 106 degrees on the intake side which is a little bit advanced, a little too advanced for what I'm looking for. They want 110, so I'm going to go ahead and retard the timing four degrees. So that's on the intake side, the exhaust, I'm leaving as is. They want 118, I got 119. That's pretty perfect. Four degrees is ah, a little bit of a bigger deal. So by retarding it, I'm gonna be moving it back in this direction. So if you look at these little tick marks here, I'm assuming that each one of these is one degree, but we're about to find out. Uh, I'm going to move it in this direction. So this line is going to match up with one, two, three, four. That mark right there. All right, so here I am loosening the bolts on the intake side of my adjustable cam gear. Now that they're loose, I'm turning the engine over so gently so as not to advance any further than I want to go. Pay attention or you will miss it. This is a teeny tiny little nothing of a forward movement to reach my desired degreeing. Now tightening those bolts again and let's double check our work and verify that we're where we want to be. Repeating my same center line verification, measuring both advanced and retarded the same amount on my dial indicator, finding the center of the two numbers to determine my true center, and verifying that my new location is correct. Okay, so I was wrong. Each one of these actually is two degrees. So you can see that I'm just shy of that fourth line right there. So it's like three and a half, no, like three and like three quarter. Um, actually, so I got, I'm, I'm, I'm seven ahead of where I was. 
So we're just going to go back to and recheck. Yeah, I decided to leave my fail in there just to show that I'm not perfect. I'm learning too, so if you mess up, don't feel bad about it. It's an easy fix, and you don't have to know everything to be able to do this job. And you know what? The internet is full of way too much fake perfection. So anyway, all right. Since with this style of timing belt tensioner, you only want to move the engine the direction of rotation, I opted to hold my crankshaft in place with a socket and ratchet, which you can't really see due to my crappy camera angle, oops, and move the camshaft until I achieved the desired position. There we go, pretty close. Now tighten those bolts again and recheck my work. And you wonder why engine building takes so long. I'm still gonna take all these back out and do the final torque with Loctite and my torque wrench. I'm gonna have to find my socket for that though, and it's MIA. I don't have a lot of SAE tools. <laughs> This is a 330 seconds, so yeah, this is not one I just sort of have in the truck ready to go, but I guess now I should. Torque is not very tight though, actually. It's what, 45 inch pounds? <laughs> yeah, that's nothing. For funsies, we're gonna go all the way around again. I took 283 and 218, added them together, 501 divided by two, 250 and a half. Take 360 degrees, I subtract 250 and a half from that, and I get 109.5. That's my final number. I'm happy with that because what they want on the intake center line is 110. I had 106 as of today. I have 109.5, and I am proud of that. Woo! I am done with one major task. And um, now I will start another one, but this feels extremely good. Now what I'm gonna do is on each single one of these little bolts, I'm gonna put some red Loctite. I'm gonna back each one out, one at a time. Um, and I mean, yeah, one at a time or two at a time. I don't know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna mess up anything because it's so perfect now. And I'm gonna put, per the instructions, a small drop of semi-permanent Loctite on each attachment screw. I have a little bit of PTSD about my Cam gears, if you have been following this series since the beginning, which I guess technically started five years ago, uh, I have a little bit of PTSD about, about my, my cam gears. So I'm actually gonna use the full strength stuff, and then I'm gonna torque all of them to between 40 and 45 inch pounds. All right, so I'll get up my inch pound torque wrench. Whew, all right, well that, that is, uh, that is my cam gears adjusted. Hell yeah. <laughs>